subsequent turns. All right, so Dylan has passed the turn to me. And before I take any activation here, I just want to pause for a second. And we really, at this point of the game, we need to get into the the rules, like the really the thickest part of Monster Apocalypse. And it's not hard. There's just a lot to it. It's, it's extensive. And that makes for a very, very good game a lot of times. So... What I'm going to do is actually just set up a little mini scenario over here. I'm going to try to explain to you the different kinds of attacks and abilities so that you have a better understanding of what all these numbers and circles and things mean on your monsters and your units. So we're going to do that right now. Um, I'll just take Dylan's Hyperform, for example, and set him up here. <clears throat> I'll set Zorog up here. You can just toss me a building, any of those. <clears throat> we'll take this building. We'll put it here, and then let's put a, uh, you got a spare unit I could use here? Negger. About a G-Tank. Put a G-Tank here. Uh, all right. Okay, so <clears throat> I've got these figures set up, <clears throat> and I'm going to be moving them around and all sorts of things just to show you. First thing we want to do is go over the left side of these figures. You'll notice that on the right side and the left side and the bottom, there's always some sort of symbols going on. And so we'll start with the left side. And as we've already covered, we have the movement icon, which is in the top left. Then under it, we have the defense icon, which gives us a certain number on our defense. Under that, we have a brawl um, icon. And what you'll notice with monsters, units, various things, some can blast, some can brawl, some can do both, some can't do either. And the only difference is in the outline of these icons. And you'll notice that a brawl icon, um, it has the, the four points on it. And Zorog here actually has a really good brawl. That brawl has a number inside of it. Here it's seven. And then underneath it, you'll see a little star and a little number. Now, this will come in whenever we're actually attacking things. And this is the number of boost dice you're going to get to that attack. So, a brawl icon here. And like I said, Zorog doesn't have a blast icon, but uh, Sky Sentinel does. So you might see one of these. And this is a blast icon. <clears throat> it has a number in it, as well as a star and uh, a small number sometimes. For Alter Sky Sentinel, it's a seven and then a star and a three. Also on a blast attack, you'll notice that there's two little bars. Sometimes there's only one bar filled in, sometimes both bars are blacked in. <clears throat> what that means is whether this unit is short range or long range. If a unit is short range, it can only shoot units within three spaces of it. If it's long range, it can only shoot a unit within five spaces of it, barring other abilities. <clears throat> and then specific to monsters, you'll see um, what's known as like a power rating. And this is in what looks like the little uh, whirlwind type thing. And it has a certain number. And usually with a monster, it's going to have a little star with a little number as well. And that's the number of boost dice you're going to get. And then under all of that, at the very bottom, you'll see the health rating. And as we already went over with the health tracker, you know, that's going to give you a certain amount of basically hit points, number of damage you can take before your monster is destroyed. So those are the basics of the left side of our monsters. <clears throat> and what I want to show you is just a basic, uh, the basic idea behind attacking and all of that. <clears throat> and we'll, we won't worry. The right side is abilities, but we won't worry with those right now. They'll come later. <clears throat> so, for instance, Zorog here. Any time that I'm occupying a square that is touching another square that the opponent is occupying, I'm considered adjacent. So even if I'm diagonally across from, from this monster, I'm still adjacent to this monster. I'm adjacent here, I'm adjacent here, I'm adjacent here. Anywhere around this monster <coughs> is considered adjacent. So anytime we're touching, we're adjacent. But there's something special here. This is considered aligned. Now, this sometimes is needed for various things, especially needed for power attacks. <clears throat> so, if something says you must be aligned, then you must have both of your sides aligned, completely aligned, um, to satisfy that condition. There's a aligned, and these monsters here are aligned, and here they're aligned. You have to have these two sides lined up. Not aligned, not aligned. All right, 
we return to one here. <clears throat> so if I'm Zorog, and I'm going to make a brawl attack, then I look at my brawl rating. I can only make a brawl attack if I'm adjacent to the enemy unit. So I'm making a brawl attack, and I check it, and it's a brawl. I see the brawl symbol. I see a 7 inside of it, and I see a star and a little 2. So that means that this roll, I can roll a maximum of 7 action dice. I don't have to use all 7, but I can roll a maximum of 7. And I add in 2 boost dice. Now, I would take these dice, roll them, and see what happens. <clears throat> I rolled 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 strikes. <clears throat> now, Ultra Sky Sentinel's defense here, you see, is a 7. So I wouldn't hit. The attack doesn't do anything, and nothing happens. Remember, we're not playing with abilities right now, so just right down the line, attack wouldn't hit, and all of these dice would move back to my unit pool. Now, <clears throat> let's say Ultra Sky Sentinel wants to blast Zorog. Now he has a 7 in his blast, he has a star and a 3 for 3 boost dice, and he has a long range. So, from here, he could still attack. Whenever you're counting range, you always count just like you're going to move. So you can count one diagonal, and then everything else is straight. I can count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 in range. <clears throat> and now something to notice is if I count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 not in range. So the unit has to be within 5 spaces. I have to actually be able to touch the miniature within 5 spaces. <clears throat> if there's 5 spaces between us, not in range. So here's in range. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I have a blast rating of 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7. So I can use a maximum of 7 action dice. I have a boost of 3, so I get 3 boost dice. And I roll these. And we get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Don't hit him. So neither of these monsters have hit each other. Nothing has happened. Now, let's just say that this blast did hit. Let's roll a couple of these up. Because we can do that right now. And let's say we get 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 hits. 9 hits definitely beats Zorog's defense of 6. So anytime I match or beat, even if I get a 6, it's still going to hit Zorog. I have to match that defense or exceed it. <clears throat> he takes damage. Everything always is going to do 1 damage unless otherwise stated. So Zorog would take 1 damage from this hit. I would take my monster tracker, my health tracker, and I take it from 6 to 5. Signify 1 damage, put it down, and the game goes on. Also note that if you're making a blast attack, you cannot make it if you're adjacent to the unit. At this point, I would have to brawl or power attack. I couldn't blast. So you have to have that range. You have to have some kind of range. I could blast from here. I could blast from here. Could not blast from here. So let's deal with units for a little bit. You'll notice that units have the same kinds of stats. They have a movement. They have a defense. They'll have a brawl sometimes. They'll have a blast sometimes. Sometimes they'll have both. But they don't have a health. And that is because every unit always has one health, unless otherwise stated. So, any time a unit takes damage, it's going to be destroyed. This unit has four movement, four defense, one brawl, and two blast. So, it's the exact same idea. Except this time, since it's a unit, I would be taking dice from my unit pool, action dice from my unit pool, and spending those, rather than from my monster pool. Also note that whenever you do use boost die in a roll, they just go back to your dice pool, your dice well, and can be used again over and over. They never change sides. They're just free dice. They're, they're supplements. So if I'm looking at base to base versus adjacent, these units are adjacent right now. Base to base, base to base, adjacent. Base to base, base to base, adjacent. Base to base, base to base, adjacent. You get the idea. So with units, it's a lot easier to be base to base. Sometimes that's important. Yes, and also whenever you're base to base, you're considered adjacent. So you're, anytime you're around within one square of this monster, you're going to be considered adjacent. But only if you're, your bases are lined up are you going to be considered base to base, but still adjacent. 
So we have those, we have the units, we also have buildings. Now buildings can be attacked just as much as units can. Zorog could brawl this building. You see that the building has a defense rating of 5, and it has a special um, rating here, and this is the energy of the building. Now the number in the energy field is how many power dice I would get if I were to destroy that building. So it's just like if I were attacking a monster, you know, I would take, if I were brought, I say, I want to brawl this building. <clears throat> I'd take my seven, maximum seven action dice, total of two boost dice, and I'd roll it. I'd try to beat the defense of that building. Now here I rolled easily over the defense. Two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I hit nine. This defense is only five. So what happens then is this building is considered hit. I would destroy the building. It would go off to the side here, be replaced by a tile, which it's going to denote in the abilities. We'll cover that, whether it's rubble or fire. Sometimes buildings are hazardous, sometimes they're not. So sometimes they'll just turn into rubble, no big deal. Sometimes they'll turn into hazards, which can hurt your monster. <clears throat> this one happens to turn into a hazard. And then because I destroyed this building, I get the number of power die that are in the energy field. So I would take these three power die and I would move them to my power pool and be able to utilize them. All this might seem, ah, I don't know what's going on, what's happening. We just wanted to go over this stuff so that whenever you see it, whenever we're playing the game, you have an idea of what's going on. We don't expect you to grasp it 100% right now. <clears throat> also notice that this building is out of the yellow square, but that's just for the example purposes. So it would never actually be here, it would have to be in a square. But it's just an example, you get the idea. <clears throat> so we've covered the basics of the left side.